Horizon Zero Dawn released earlier this year to critical acclaim, but for everything it does well, perhaps its most impressive feature lies in its presentation. Horizon is a gorgeous game, and the Frozen Wilds is here to remind everyone just what Guerrilla's remarkable Decima engine is capable of. Pushing beyond the forests and great plains of the original experience, the Frozen Wilds invites players to the northernmost region of the map to traipse around snow-covered fields and steep mountains. Today then, we're going to check out these new features and explore this beautiful new world, while also digging deeper into the Decima engine itself. Let's get started. Before entering the Frozen Wilds, players must traverse previously covered terrain, and within minutes of returning to the world of Horizon, memories of its beauty came flooding back. From the gorgeous lighting, the world-class HDR implementation, and smooth performance, there's little doubt that Horizon remains a beautiful game. But once you find yourself on the path to the cut, it becomes clear that the artists have pushed new boundaries with brand new visual features that help immerse the player in the world. First and foremost is the new snow deformation technology. While moving through areas packed with deep snow, of which there are many, Aloy and other entities can carve up the landscape in a realistic manner, resulting in lengthy indents. These trails persist for quite some time as well after wandering through them. This means that after any skirmish, you can follow the trail of deformation around the battlefield to retrace the fight. Beyond this, as the snow deforms in your wake, Grass textures become visible beneath the surface, creating the illusion of snow resting atop a once grassy plain. Even better, as Aloy moves through the snow, the animation is adjusted to match. Her feet realistically kick up snow while running through it, while snowy textures are applied to her character model. The result is a convincing sensation of moving through a snowy landscape that was missing in the similar areas featured in the main game. This is all enhanced further by the snow showers themselves. Often thick, the use of lit snow particles does an excellent job of building just the right atmosphere for each scene. This is certainly one of the most impressive implementations of a snowy landscape we've seen to date. And all of this is complemented by a gorgeous color palette. The artists have carefully selected just the right combination of colors for each and every scene. From the pink glow of sunrise across the village to the freezing mountaintops, the depiction of realistic and dramatic light and color is top-notch here. It's clear that the team has become even more confident in its abilities this year. Another nice addition can be found in pools of water. While the implementation of screen space reflections still falls short of expectations, these freezing pools and rivers now feature an interactive icy layer across the surface. As you walk through the water, Aloy leaves trails behind, not unlike the snowy landscape. These trails appear to be somewhat persistent as well, provided you remain in the immediate area. And of course, doing battle with flame-spewing enemies has a nice impact on the surface as well. Each of these new features helps enhance the Horizon experience then by creating a more interactive and cohesive overall world. Since first examining the game earlier this year, however, Guerrilla Games has generously provided assets and information on how its engine functions. While some of these features may be present in other forms across different games, it's fascinating to see visual representation of these functions within Decima. Let's start with the characters and creatures of the world. The robotic denizens play a key role in defining the look and feel of Horizon, and the way they engage with the player is very important to maintaining this feeling. Each creature is designed to react to Aloy based on a set of predefined rules and boundaries. From the normal gameplay perspective, this is what a player would normally see. As a distant creature spots the player, it begins to approach to determine if you're a threat. You can then hide from the threat and avoid further conflict or choose to engage. So how does it know how to search for the player and what determines its behavior? Well, it's partially driven by this. Objects and characters are assigned rules, visualized here as transparent boxes. The enemy has a two-stage vision cone. The first larger yellow cone represents its alert stage, while the red barrier triggers an immediate reaction. You can see a selection of hiding spots then presented across the map as blue boxes, and by hiding in them, the enemy is forced to search. Now if the enemy bumps into the player or spots the player within its sphere, it will switch to attack mode, but here it's unable to locate the player and will eventually return to scouting mode. 
This basic logic is applied to different enemies across the game with adjustments made based on the enemy type. Beyond this, the underlying pathing logic is fascinating to observe as well. The enemies can seamlessly navigate across the terrain while avoiding obstacles, but these obstacles can be adjusted in real time. The blue field presented across them represents an area where AI can safely traverse. If an adjustment is made and the path is modified, however, the AI can dynamically react and avoid this in a realistic manner, complete with reaction animations and sound. Another fascinating element tied to the design and flow of the game can be found in its node graph system. Now, if you've used Unreal Engine 4 in the past, you may be familiar with this style of design. Essentially, the node graph system works similarly to the blueprint system there and was created for use in the Decima engine to ease the creation of quests and behaviors. Rather than writing everything using code, designers can script out these behaviors and situations using this system. Of course, if you need added flexibility, the system can generate C++ code directly, a feature that was added later to Unreal. Now, if you're not familiar with node graphs, this example should help. The tutorial at the start of the game tasks players with learning about healing items. At this point, the node which determines whether players have picked up the correct item becomes highlighted. Every so often, it will then cycle through these upper nodes and play a voice clip from Rost, urging the player to perform the action. Once that action is completed then, we can move to the next node and so on and so forth. So now we have some minor insight into how the characters and quests might function, but what about their visual makeup? Horizon features supremely detailed character models with a very high triangle count and complex hair and clothing systems designed to allow these elements to react naturally within the environment. When you break down the model into a wireframe, the sheer level of detail on display becomes immediately evident. Then there's the lighting in the world itself. We've discussed the cloud system in the past, but its impact on the visuals cannot be understated. One key member of the development team poured most of his time into studying cloud behavior and rendering in order to find this optimum solution. The results are as you see, and while the cost per frame is still rather high, especially when the clouds are in full view, this cost is carefully factored into the overall rendering budget per frame, and it works really well. World lighting is interesting too. Horizon makes use of pre-calculated global illumination, but to make this work with its dynamic time of day system, the engine must blend between six different bakes as day progresses. This is combined with other lighting passes to effectively give the impression of real indirect lighting with a moving sun. Now, Horizon uses a multitude of lighting passes in building each scene, starting with emissive or glowing lights such as the sky, followed then by local direct lights such as these torches. This is then followed up by the static indirect lighting pass and the sun bounce pass before the sun and sky are rendered. Next are the reflections of light across the scenery just before the final texture layer is presented. Taken together, we have a complete scene in all its glory. Of course, this is just a small taste of what's happening behind the scenes in this game. Horizon is immensely complex, but hopefully this provides a tiny bit of insight into how some of these systems work. Naturally, everything presented here is used in both the Frozen Wilds and the original Horizon experience, since they do indeed share the same world. Now, what's impressive about all this is how everything runs. On PS4 Pro, using the high-resolution checkerboard 4K mode, the Frozen Wilds turns in the same generally smooth level of performance as the regular game. It feels great to play, even though it's just 30 frames per second. A lot of this is likely down to the excellent motion blur implementation. That said, it's not 100% perfect. When using the game's high resolution mode, we did run across occasional bouts of slowdown. This cramped battle here in the cave, for instance, really gives the pro a hard time. It's certainly an unexpected spot to encounter dips in performance. That said, even during normal gameplay, you're bound to run into small hitches and dips here and there. While fighting this creature, for instance, we definitely ran into dips below the 30 FPS line. Nothing too severe, mind you, but it does happen and you will notice it. The same thing happens here when going in close to override this tower. It's fine right up until the point where you get next to the tower and attempt the override. Again, the drop is brief, but you will notice it if you look closely enough. Which is of course where the performance mode comes into play. This option was added shortly after launch, and it lowers the resolution somewhat in order to secure improved performance. 
The general feeling here is that this does indeed take care of the sort of drop we presented above, delivering an even more stable 30fps experience. Still, when most of the game is already locked at 30 frames per second, it's really not worth the hit to resolution in my opinion. Still, getting to this level of performance across each mode is an impressive feat in a game this complex, and achieving it requires a lot of careful resource management. One of the nice features in Decima then, something which has become more common in modern tools as a whole, is the ability to debug and test the game in real time running on actual hardware. The environment offers the developers plenty of options for testing and viewing performance metrics of their game. And of course, one tool useful for determining the load of a scene is the profiler. Now this is very common in development these days, and Decima includes its own. In this instance, we're looking at the GPU profiler, but there are other options as well. You can of course pause the profiler and receive precise specifics on the frame in question. Here we can see the number of draw calls being made, the number of triangles in the scene, and a whole lot more. It's interesting stuff. Really though, we're just scratching the surface of what Decima offers, but overall we came away with the impression that the engine is highly capable, yet very friendly for designers to work with. It's an impressive in-house collection of technologies and tools. And Horizon the Frozen Wilds is perhaps the best example of what can be created using it. The artists and designers have been unleashed to create one of the most striking open world environments we've ever seen. Everything from the density per scene, the choices of color, the fluidity of the animation, and the volume of assets in use here really impresses. We've seen a lot of large open-ended games this year, but it's clear that Guerrilla Games stands at the top of the industry with its efforts. Ultimately, it was interesting to return to Horizon once again. Even in the face of the growing open world fatigue that many of us are experiencing, I found that the world and lore was interesting enough to carry me through the game. It's just an incredibly compelling experience on top of standing out as one of the most technically impressive games this year. It's definitely worth a look. That's all for now though. If you enjoyed this look at the Frozen Wilds and Horizon in general, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, this is John, signing off.